Hi there, I'm Sherry Minnelli um, of Our Jam Music, and today I'm here with Ron Minnelli. We're going to be talking about mastermind buttons. That's not only for the Mastermind GT, but also for the LT, the PBC 6X, and the PBC 10. And uh, today we're going to focus mostly on IA, which is instant access, right, Ron? Got that? Yep. And um, if we have questions or if we have extra time, we're going to try and limit this to 30 minutes. If we have a little bit of extra time, uh, maybe we can go into some other things. And then um, upcoming episodes, upcoming webinars, um, we have a few ideas, but one of the bigger ideas we have is to bring on some of our super users. We have some amazing users that have been with us for many years who do some really cool things. And Ron is an engineer. He doesn't play out like you guys do. So we want to bring some people in for 10 or 15 minutes at a time to talk about their gear and how they use it because it seems like that's what our customers are asking for. So I am going to mute myself, shut off my video, and turn this over to Ron. So welcome, Ron. Okay. Um, so basically, yes, we're, today we're talking about um, instant access buttons, the sort of the, where most of the power comes from in the, the Mastermind series. Um, and so a little bit of history, um, you know, the, the earliest and, and still the simplest MIDI controllers, they select presets. They, you know, you might have some preset buttons and you might have some bank buttons. And um, that's, you know, that's it. And then basically the idea with a, a preset in MIDI or, or a program in MIDI terminology is that, um, you know, you press, one of those, and then it sends a command to all your devices, and they all change to you know some you know preset configuration, and um, you know, and that's that's great for a lot of purposes, and you know everything works that way in in, in MIDI land. Now somewhere along the line, and I I, I want to say this was a, a Bob Bradshaw idea. Um, basically, the idea was to have another button, another type of button that just changes one particular thing, and and not your entire system. And that was the uh, the instant access button. And so, in the the early switching systems, the presets, or I'm sorry, the systems, the, the controllers would have you know preset buttons, but then would also have all these other buttons that would have individual access to turn on and off into individual effects. You know, kind of like a virtual pedal board. And that's where where instant access came from. And and all of our mastermind series makes a lot of use of this. And we kind of took that idea and. Uh, went a lot further with it and um, they can do a lot more than just control a single thing. Although they still, um, you know, basically still have that same concept of, of doing a, uh, you know, a single task. So looking here on the screen on a, on a GT, um, this is the uh, out of the box configuration and we're configured for a, uh, uh, an effect gizmo, a, a loop switcher. So you would have, for example, like 12 effects plugged into this thing, and then you could, um, you know, turn on each one of those loops individually, just hitting one of these buttons. And so um, basically you would, um, well, the interesting stuff is when you double click the button, you can start to see what's going on. Um, like fully half of what's on the screen is applicable only to um, instant access buttons. Um, and um, the, the real important thing here is uh, this uh, IA action section at the bottom. And what this is, is just a list of things that happen when um, this button is, is to be pressed. Um, here, you can see we have, uh, if we look down here, it says effect gizmo, loop one, CC toggle, blah, blah, blah. And so basically it's gonna send a, a MIDI continuous controller message to the effect gizmo and um, what it basically it says when this button is turned on it's going to turn the the loop on the effect gizmo on and what the but when the button turns off it's going to turn off the uh the, the loop on the effect gizmo pretty much what you would expect um so we would probably want to sort of take this uh apart a little further and and this is kind of the uh on the left here this is kind of the uh the uh shortened name here but everything is also on the right here where you can actually change it um there are various action types um, in the case of, um, you know, a lot, most of these are MIDI messages, CC toggle, CC momentary, PC, note, and SysX. And then we have this additional um, system category, which we'll get into. Um, on Mastermind PVCs, there's also an audio type as well to uh, 
to control the built-in audio um, features of the uh, of the PVC. Um, and so basically, when you're adding an action to the list, you set the type of the action, and then if applicable, you're going to tell it which um, device you're going to set up or wh which device you're going to send to. And um, this is probably the, the topic of another thing, but uh, another webinar. But basically, um, you start off by kind of making a list of the devices that are in your system and um, what MIDI channel they're on. And so basically, this is telling you which, which device we want to communicate with. Um, and then we have CC number. And uh, MIDI does a lot of things just simply by, well, pretty much everything, <laughs> simply by number. And um, in most controllers, you would be required to look up these numbers to know that um, number 80 uh, controls the, uh, the first audio loop in the effect gizmo. Um, fortunately, we don't need to do that. You can type in the number manually, but um, we have sort of a, a database in the uh, in the mastermind and in the editor that lets you look this stuff up. So we say you can, if you want to select um, from this database, you hit the select CC button here, and you can see it has um, your devices on the left, um, and then it has the the entire list of CC numbers on the right. So you can basically say, I just want to control effect gizmo loop one, and it already knows that um, you know the the number that needs to be sent. To the device is 80 and you don't need to worry about it you just select it um, so this uh, off value and on value is um, again MIDI using uh, numbers where we might want to use words instead and in MIDI speak um, the uh, the minimum value is zero and um, that's for, for something that only turns on and off that's considered off and um, 127 is the maximum number you can send and that's considered an on so what this, it's a, a little bit confusing, but basically what this means is when the button is turned off, it's going to send a zero to the effect gizmo um, turning off the loop. When the button is turned on, it's going to send a 127 to the effect gizmo turning on the loop. So, you know, totally makes sense. Um, but, you know, in certain cases, you can reverse these, for example, and if you want the, uh, you know, the button to... Uh, or the loop to turn on when the button is off, you can just put 127 here and, and zero there. Um, and so it's it, basically, it's, you know, the default configuration is probably what you want, but there are a lot of reasons in sort of specialized cases where you might want to change these. Um, if, and if you're adjusting things on certain pedals that can adjust volume levels, for example, you could set these to two numbers that represent two volume levels and, um, you know, have it uh, adjust your volume level accordingly. So that's, um, you know, so this button right now is just controlling one thing, you know, one effect in, in an effect gizmo. <clears throat> and um, each button can have up to uh, 20 actions stacked up here. And so we can go in and we could add, you know, more devices. Like, let's back out for a second. Maybe we will set up another device here. And let's say we add a uh, Strymon timeline. And um, this is really all you have to do to, to add a device um, if it's one that we have defined in our database. And so select the manufacturer, select the model, and then each device should be on its own MIDI channel. So um, we're going to just set this to, to channel two and we'll just pretend we have a, a timeline attached that's on channel two. So everything else you can pretty much leave as it is in most cases. So if we go back to the buttons and edit this, um, we're, we're back where we were before and we can say new action and let's say we want to um, uh, add a, uh, a CC or actually even we can, well, you can do a lot of things, but let's uh, actually, let's say we're going to send a program change to the timeline and um, when the button is turned off, it goes to program zero and when the button is turned on, it goes to program one. And so there are just a million things you could do with this and we could, you know, control all of your pedals with a single button press. Like I said, you can stack up to 20 actions here. And so you can do some really powerful, you know, massive things here to, uh, you know, and, and so it's, it isn't just a, a simple IA button anymore, but it can just, you know, run entire lists of, of actions. So that's, um, you know, sort of the MIDI side of things. Um, 
also you can add uh, system actions and that adds a whole bunch of um, options here. When you select a system action, there's a whole, uh, instead of having a device here, there's a subtype and there's a bunch of different things you can do here. Um, BPM, you can set tempo, expression pedal, you can change the expression pedal configuration. Um, you can go in and out of IA mode, which is something we explained in the previous webinar. Um, you can do IA store, which we'll uh, mention a little bit later. Um, you can call up a macro. You can select a button page. Um, button pages also in the previous webinar. Um, you can select a preset. Um, you can change another IA button to turn on or off. Um, steps, that's probably another, that's a whole other thing. Um, turn on the tuner display and you can either and select a specific set list or select a specific song. So there's, um, this, this allows you to control a, a great deal of things in the, uh, in the, in the mastermind. Um, and so probably the most common ones that people would use are uh, page and preset. And you could, for example, um, set a, uh, a, set this. And so when you press it, now it will turn on the loop, select a preset on the timeline, and it can go to a specific button page. Like say, for example, maybe, um, well, the timeline has a built-in looper, for example. You could create a whole separate button page that has looper controls, and this, um, pressing this button will switch you over to that page um, so that you, you know, turns on the timeline and brings you right over to the looper controls. And so that's, you know, one uh, possible action. Um, other things that would be useful, um, we could go over here and sometimes um, people might want, like I say, a specific preset. And it, instead of basically selecting presets um, based on the preset and the bank buttons, they might just say, you know, I just need, you know, preset 27 um, is, is just a, a common solo preset that I use or something. And so you can override one of these buttons here, um, change it to system, preset. And then, you know, type whatever preset number you want. And when, as soon as you press this button, it switches you over to a preset. And so um, these are really good in advanced configurations because you can do some pretty crazy stuff. But um, we won't go much further into that just now. Um, probably the next thing we need to talk about is um, the, these uh, settings up here. And uh, this controls, um, and notice it's IA settings. This only affects IA buttons and not uh, the other types. And so um, what we need to do is uh, address a few of these. Um, send on preset change and update on preset change are, are probably the most important settings and also the most confusing for, for a lot of people. And so we'll, uh, we'll talk about those next. Um, so going back to our buttons that, we'll just pick another one that uh, we haven't messed with yet. So this one controls loop three on the effect gizmo and we have send on preset change and update on preset change turned on. And so with um, these IA buttons, you know, we talked about their, their primary function is when you press this button, it's gonna turn loop three on. And when you press it again, it's gonna turn it off. Um, with those two checkboxes turned on, they also can be programmed. If we go over to the presets tab, um, we have the, the same display, but it does something a little bit different. Um, we could go, for example, and go to preset, well, we're on preset one. We can say, well, preset one, I want loops three and five to turn on. And this, this is um, specifically the update on preset change checkbox. Like, for example, if I went back to loop four, for example, and turned off update on preset change, and then went back to Okay, there it is. Okay, um, you'll notice this doesn't change as I click it. And that uh, update on preset change means that you can, for each preset, select whether an IA button is on or off. So I just turned on three and five here. And if I switch to preset two, they're off, but we can pick other loops to turn on. Um, we'll do nine, 10, and five, and preset three you know, eight and seven. And so as I go back to these presets, you see they'll change to what I remembered or to what I, what I stored. 
And so what's great about this is we can use the system to, um, you know, to basically program our effect gizmo um, directly from the GT. And so as we, when we're actually using the GT, we'll select these presets and those loops will turn on and off automatically. Um, and so, you know, really powerful. Um, you can do the same thing on the GT itself by pressing the buttons and turning it on and then holding an IA store button. And it will, if you hold that for two seconds, it will just store the current on off state of each IA button um, to the current preset. And, you know, just, just like we did here. And so you can, without going into the editor, without going into setup, you can just adjust each preset and tell it which ones uh, turn on and which ones do not. So um, really a uh, quick and easy way to, uh, to set up your presets. Hey there, uh, I think Jeff's got a question for you here. Okay. Can you jump to a page, system I a command that is higher than your global page limit? I may want to have just four to five pages or five pages to scroll through, but maybe my Strymon looper buttons can be hidden away on page 15, for example. Um, you cannot. You, it, basically, you, um, if you're, uh, you know, basically the page limit is a, is a, is a hard limit. And it, it's, it, the, the max page thing is something that I've always wanted to spend some time. So it may not really even need to be there. But I was trying to basically make sure that um, basically in case there were speed issues, um, you could actually, um, you know, have it ignore pages that you're not using. Um, in practice, it seems like that's not an issue. Um, so it's it, basically if, if you set, but, you know, for now, at least if you set, say, your page limit to four, you just can't access, you know, five through 16. Um, what you can do, however, and we'll kind of go off over here to this page oops need to go to the sorry zoom keeps uh, getting in my way here there is the buttons tab if we go and edit the page button um what what i recommend doing is in globals setting your max page to the the maximum number of pages you actually use like the pages you'll use ever and um on your page buttons you'll see that there is a, a min and a max so if you set this to like one and, and three, then this page button will only ever cycle through pages one and three. And then you can have, for example, your looper controls on page four. And so this page button will never get to it, but a, uh, uh, a uh, you know, a, a page action can access page four. And then, um, then, you know, over here, you would say your maximum button page is four, for example. And so, so this should always be, you know, you know, the, truly the maximum page number you use anywhere, but you can change any of your page buttons to select a different range of, of, uh, of pages. And so with those things combined, you should be able to do what you want. It's just, um, you know, max page is a, is a hard limit. Okay, so back to, um, go back here. So, so that's what update on preset change does. And it, um, it, like I said, it allows you to store the state of the button. Now, you saw I turned off um, update on preset change on loop four, so I cannot program it here. It won't, it won't change anything. What it will do on the actual mastermind is basically it makes it so that the button only responds to actually being pressed. So if I you know, press loop four, it'll turn on. I press it again, it'll turn off. But if I change presets, loop four is going to stay the same. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's a useful thing, like say, um, I, I, I'm, I'm blanking on examples, but there are definitely times where um, people have asked, well, how do I, you know, not make this, this effect change when I change presets? And so by turning off update on preset change, you've kind of uncoupled the, uh, the IA button from, from preset changes, and it only works manually. Um, and so it's a counterpart here is um, going back is um, send on preset change. And what that means is every time you change presets on the device, it will run through the actions and just run it as if the button had been pressed. Um, and so, you know, it's, you know, normally 
you would either have both of those settings on or you would have both of them off. There are sometimes reasons you would want to have um, one or the other, but those are kind of more uh, unusual configurations. But so for example, on these buttons that control the, um, the uh, effect gizmo loops, we have both turned on. So update on preset change means that as we change presets, the buttons change. Send on presets says not only does it visibly change on the controller, but it's actually also going to send the messages to the effect gizmo. And so for things like a loop switcher, you definitely want to have both of those turned on. Um, in the case of this, uh, in the case of this um, loop four here, we really probably should have both of those turned off um, because what would happen otherwise is that it would always send its um, message to the effect gizmo every time you change preset, and um, you know it would it would probably cause confusion and so. Anyway, uh, you know, certainly if there's any questions, let me know. But um, this, it's, a, it's a tricky thing, but they're really important settings to, um, you know, control how, how the, the behavior of these buttons and, you know, what they can do for you. So I'm worried about people getting a little confused with the effect gizmo. So you would use the effect gizmo if you had the GT, but if you have a PVC 10, PVC right. So, so, yeah. So with those, um, it's, a, it's a little bit different. And I will probably have, there, there are, the, the way that audio loops are handled in the PVC is is slightly different, um, but well, more than slightly, I guess. And so that's probably the topic of another webinar. Um, but basically, you know, I, I, I do this case because, you know, it, even if you're using a PVC, you might still have outboard effects or a mini effect gizmo or something like that. And so um, it's just a convenient uh, uh, example, but I will have to, um, you know, address the, uh, you know, the audio, the built-in audio loops on the PVC separately because they're, 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 they're similar settings, but they're handled a bit different. Um, so we'll find out, does everything make sense so far for what we've explained? Yes. Great. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, do you right. have more to talk about with the IA or do we need a new subject or? Oh yeah, no, no, we're, we got more. <laughs> okay. So we have about six to 16 minutes, uh, that we can still record for. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cover this. Cause that's, I mean, and we still, I mean, it's, it's a, IAs are really the sort of the most powerful thing in the whole controller. And so we're, you know, we're not even going to get to everything that they can do because there are a lot of things and it, it those, They've uh, well. They started as, as sort of a, a small and simple thing, and as as the uh, firmware has grown, that's like most of the functionality has gone into the IA button. So there's just uh, so. Do we need to either have a second webinar on IA, or do we need to let people know that if they're really not gonna, if you know that, I guess I worry. We you know what we created is kind of a monster because. You know, if you want to, this thing is so incredibly powerful, but not everybody needs the power. And some people should be maybe avoiding um, going too deep because they don't need to. Like with yeah, and then well, but yeah, what I'm doing here is is going to be um, you know uh, just the the basics that probably people will need or will at least run into and need to know what it means. And I'm not yeah, I'm definitely not trying to cover everything in this one. It just wouldn't be possible. So. On that note, um, I should show a couple of things here. Um, Oops, so a question so, before we keep go, uh, is there a way to copy the IA actions um, from one preset to another, or is the only way to copy the entire preset and edit from there? Um, yeah, there, there's, yeah, you, you would, if you're talking about like the, uh, the IAs, like, um, like preset actions, um, those, yeah, you would have to copy the whole preset. We don't have currently a way to copy a, uh, um, you know, just, just an IA action list or a preset action list, unfortunately. Good idea though. Um, but at this point you have to do it the, the hard way. You can only copy entire presets or entire buttons. Um, Okay, so let me, um, I'll do a quick thing on, on momentary here. And it's a pretty um, straightforward setting. Um, and um, basically with a, a momentary button, if you turn that on, it's, it just becomes a momentary switch. So when you, when you hold the button down, um, 
it 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 sends when you well when you press the button initially and hold it, um, it sends the, uh, the the on message, but the button only stays on for as long as you hold it, and then when you release, it's going to send the off message. And so, um, so I've seen you know continuing our our uh, effect gizmo example here, I've seen people use it for like effects that they only use for like accents, you know, like real crazy effects or something. And so they just want to use it for just, you know, a few notes or, you know, something or a measure or something like that. And so they um, set their, their button to control the loop to momentary. And so it will, you know, hold the button. It's, it, uh, it, you know, the effect is active, release the button, the effect goes away. And so, um, you know, just a useful thing. Um, and, the other place where this is uh, commonly used, and I get this question just all the time, is um, if we need a, a page button, um, what we'll do, let's, let's say we want to make a button here that uh, switches to page two. Um, we'll change this to system page two. And so this, this button, when we press it, will go to, to page two. We'll even call it that, just so we remember. Um, and so now, just because we wanted to do this, there, there's a few things that we just don't want it to do. And what that, you know, we don't want the button to stay on, for example. When you go from page one to page two, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, a one-shot deal. It's not like a loop where it's on or it's off. So what we want to do is turn on momentary so that uh, you know it does it once um, and you know when you come back to the page the button is off again um, we, people had problems with this where they had a button on page one that would switch them to another page um, and then they would return back to the original page and that bu that button was still on and so they had to press it once to turn it off and then press it again to turn it back on again anyway so it basically this is this is um, you know, a good application for momentary. You just press it once, it does its job, it turns back off as soon as you release it. Um, also, you don't want page changes to happen automatically um, when you change presets, typically. So when, when you're making a, a page button like this, turn off these so that the button only functions when you actually press it and not when you uh, are changing presets. Um, one last thing I'll cover here because it's very common and really important is the uh, grouping. And you can set up buttons to be in a group. Um, following our example here, some guys will have like, say like three overdrive pedals, but you know they only ever use one at a time. And so turning on one pedal, it would be great if the other pedals would turn off. So we're gonna take loops eight, nine, and 10 here, and we're gonna set group to one. There, and you'll notice there are uh, 12 groups available. and what groups do is that buttons that all have the same group number, um, it will only allow one of them to be on at any given time. So um, if we go over to presets here, um, we'll go to some new presets here. Um, now that these have all been set to group one, if I hit loop nine, loop 10, it turns off the other um, button in the uh, buttons in the group and it only allows one to be on, um, you know, it's, which is different than the other loops that you can do whatever you want with these and turn them on and off. And so groups do this, um, you know, and, and you can have as many buttons as you want in a group. And um, like I said, there are 12 independent groups. So if I wanted, you know, loops 11 and 12 to be grouped together, I could set those to group two and they would operate independently from this group. And so you would, could have one of these turned on and one of these two turned on. Now you'll notice there is a little issue in that I, I always have to have one on right now. I can't turn them off. Um, there is a setting on there. And if you go to the global tab, um, there, are, there are some settings for groups here. If you go to group one, there are two settings, allow all buttons off and um, send off messages. Um, we just wanna turn allow all buttons off. Um, and now if we go here, we can, click these, but if I click loop eight again, you can turn it off. And so um, now you can have one or zero buttons turned on in this group and it just will, you know, just not allow two or three. Um, the other setting here 
send off messages. This one <laughs> probably takes more time than uh, we, we have to, uh, to explain. But in a case of using something like an effect gizmo or mini effect gizmo, you definitely want to keep this on. In short, what it does is it, uh, when we have, there we go, switch, ah, sorry. <laughs> Zoom keeps putting something in my way. There. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, when we're doing this, you'll see that when I press one button, two things happen. I turn loop nine on and I turn loop 10 off. And what send off messages means is that this button is gonna send its message to turn loop nine on, and this button is going to send its message to the effect gizmo to turn it off. So in, in the, this case, this is exactly what we want, otherwise loop 10 would stay on and you would have some problems. There are other cases where you don't want that to happen and you only want the, current, um, the currently selected button to send um, its messages. And so, it's one of those things where it's a uh, you know special cases and I don't know it would it would take uh, I guess we would need some more um, specific cases to describe this but uh, that's uh, I guess that's all I can say about that for now um, we probably um, have covered the basics of IAs here and that's probably about all we can do in this uh, in this particular webinar um, there are a bunch of other settings but they're going to have to be for other days. All right, well, I hope that answered a lot of questions and uh, we're gonna make this replay available on our YouTube channel. So, you know, please feel free to comment on other questions you might have so that we know whether or not to do another more, you know, another webinar. Um, so I think that's about it. We're about out of time here. Yeah, and we, um, we got a lot of great feedback, like a lot more than we expected on the previous one. So please, you know, if you liked it, and especially if you're uh, watching the replay, please let us know that you liked it. And um, if you have further questions or want to see other topics covered, let us know. That's the, the main thing that will keep us going is, you know, letting us know that this is actually helpful for people. Um, and so, like I said, we were quite uh, surprised with how many people have been watching the replay on the prior one. So that's, that's great. And, you know, we're really glad that this is helping. All right. It'll help with uh, tech support too, because, you know, we get so many tech support calls. It's kind of nice to give an overview at one time and let people understand how this all works. All right. Well, thank you all. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, and if you've right. got a certain, you know, we're not going to do a certain, um, day and time consistently because we have people from all over the world so we're just kind of picking random times and days that ron and i are available to do this um you know so that some other people might be able to attend but if you have something in particular you know we we might uh might be able to work with you as far as the time and day that we actually schedule this all right, all right. uh you want to shut off the recording on your end there i will <laughs> okay thank you